Okay, I left you to think about examples of absorption and scattering of optical light in the Earth's atmosphere. Um, so there are various processes you can think about here. Um, examples of absorption might be the idea that um, certainly the at the ultraviolet end of the spectrum, then uh, molecules like uh, ozone uh, in the Earth's atmosphere, uh, oh, those molecules will absorb those um, ultraviolet uh, photons as they come down through, uh, which is just as well because that protects us from the harmful effects of the, you know, the ultraviolet uh, rays. Um, other examples would be uh, scattering processes. So one of the reasons why, well, the reason why the sky is blue uh, is because of uh, so-called Rayleigh scattering by molecules in the air. And so they uh, scatter the blue light more than the uh, red light. And so that is why uh, the sky appears to be uh, blue. Um, in clouds, you have both absorption and scattering going on. Uh, you know, the clouds appear sort of white often because of uh, scattering of, of light. Uh, certainly that's also true of the very high clouds, which are like cirrus clouds, which are basically uh, icy particles. Uh, and so there you've got, uh, again, uh, photons kind of uh, scattering off those icy particles. So those are just some of the examples that you, you might think of uh, in everyday life. Okay. So let's now um, head towards uh, deriving an equation that describes uh, these uh, processes and will end up telling us you know, how the intensity of radiation changes as it passes through a particular medium. So again, in astronomy, we're usually talking about uh, radiation traveling through clouds of interstellar gas or, or that kind of uh, scenario. So we need to now perhaps define a, a couple of quantities which uh, are key to this interaction. So we've already met this idea of opacity, so I'm just going to define it for you. Uh, so um, I'm going to define it uh, as kappa new, so new standing for frequency here. So kappa is opacity and new means it's a function of frequency, which clearly it will be. Uh, and it's defined as the kind of fractional reduction in intensity uh, per unit path length. So it has dimensions or units of per meter. Um, there are other ways of defining this kind of quantity uh, that you will see uh, in textbooks. Sometimes it's uh, multiplied by the density to give you a uh, an absorption cross section, uh, and so it'll appear as kind of uh, uh, meter squared per kilogram that that kind of uh, quantity. So there are different ways of defining it, but this is how I'm going to define it here. And then the other key quantity so that deals with the absorption and scattering side. The other key quantity uh, is emissivity. Uh, J nu, so again, a function of frequency. And this, again, you don't need to worry too much about the details here, uh, but it's the amount of energy emitted per unit volume, per unit time, per unit frequency interval into a unit solid angle. Again, I don't want to get dragged into a debate on solid angle. So um, basically, you know, if you've got a little volume of gas, it's emitting radiation uh, if it's at a certain temperature and density and composition. So that, um, is what emissivity is, how much radiation does a volume of gas emit. Okay, so let's set up a little uh, problem here. So we're looking at exactly this problem. Imagine we've got uh, a little cube, if you like, a uh, little uh, volume of gas, say, in space. Um, so it's got a, a volume, it's going to like an infinitesimal volume. So it's got a volume dV. And we're asking the question, how does the intensity at a particular frequency uh, change from entering this volume to exiting the volume on the other side after traveling a distance uh, dS here? 
and the other dimension on this cube is the surface area here, dA on the entry and exit. Okay, so we can use the definitions of opacity and emissivity that we just had to uh, write down an equation that shows the difference in intensity between coming out and going in. Okay, so there will be absorption and emission going on uh, in this volume. So from, so let's write that down. What's the difference in intensity coming out to going in? That's on the left-hand side here to, uh, and caused by these different processes. So from the definition, opacity was the fractional reduction in intensity per unit path length. So we need to scale up by the path length, which was ds in this case. And it was a fractional reduction. So we need to multiply by the intensity itself. Okay. So that's a negative quantity because that's dealing with um, you know, photons that are being removed, if you like. And this part deals with the photons being emitted. So remember, emissivity was per unit volume. So we need to multiply up by the volume of our little cube, dV. And, but then to turn it back into an intensity type of variable, intensity is, you know, amount of energy crossing a unit area per unit time, per unit frequency interval into a unit solid angle. So we need to divide by the area of that. Uh, side of the side of the cube. Okay, so we can simplify this equation. So obviously the volume of our cube dV is just dA times dS. So that will just simplify down to dS. We can bring the dS over to the other side, and in the limit when you know just from uh, calculus when dS becomes small, this because becomes uh, the derivative uh, rate of change, uh, the rate of change of intensity with uh, s, the path length through the medium. And it's just given by minus kappa nu times the intensity plus the emissivity. So that is one way of writing what we would call the radiative transfer equation, which describes the how intensity changes as a function of uh, distance through a cloud. Okay. We now want to introduce uh, another a variable, uh, which is uh, used uh, endlessly in, in astrophysics and also in, in radio astronomy. It's a concept of optical depth. Okay. And it, optical depth is defined sort of this way, so that, uh, and it's referred to as tau. Again, of course, it's a function of frequency. So d tau will just be the opacity kappa nu times ds. Okay. So that means we can, uh, we're gonna divide, we're gonna find another form of the transfer equation, just div dividing this equation through by, by kappa and bringing the kappa over here and changing this to a d tau on this side. So that gives what looks like an even simpler sort of looking equation. So now it's uh, di d tau. So the rate of change of intensity with optical depth and that just equals minus i nu times uh, s nu. So s nu is a new quantity we've introduced. It's just the ratio of the emissivity to the opacity. And this is known, known as the source function. So it, it, again, it's the ratio of how much a gas emits to how much it absorbs. So it's, it's that kind of quantity, okay? So just be careful here of a few things. Um, the S nu here is nothing to do with the S nu that is commonly used as flux in radio astronomy. So don't get confused between those two quantities. We're not really gonna see the source function again anyway. Um, and just let me go back here. Again, in some textbooks, well, in most textbooks, you would see a negative sign in front of here. So that d tau is actually minus kappa nu ds. So it just depends on which way you choose to, to measure optical depth either into the medium or uh, back towards the observer. But again, let's not get bogged down in the details. Um, so let me just say a few words on optical depth. Um, so optical depth you can see is a dimensionless quantity. Okay, so uh, 
kappa nu was per unit path length, and we've multiplied by a path length here. So it's dimensionless. Okay. And it, it optical depth really, you know, again, it comes back to this idea of describing uh, whether you can basically see through a medium or not. Okay. And so we'll see later um, when the optical depth is very small, basically much less than one. That means the opacity is also small. So that would be like an, uh, a transparent medium. So a medium that has an optical depth much smaller than unity would be, you know, basically mostly transparent. You could, radiation can penetrate a long way through it. Okay. Conversely, if the optical depth of a medium is very high and it's much greater than one, you basically cannot see through that medium at all. Okay. And so the medium would be totally opaque. Okay. So you've got these two different extremes. Okay. And so an optical depth of around unity is a kind of a key concept. Um, and another way to think about this is, you know, especially if you're looking into sort of like a cloud of gas, you will be able to see into where the point at where the optical depth that's built up along your line of sight has approached uh, unity. And then you won't be able to see any further through the medium. So, so that's a very sort of useful concept to bear in mind as well. Okay. So that you can see into a cloud of gas up to the point at where the optical depth uh, reaches unity. Okay, so um, again, I don't wanna dwell on this bit too much. It's a little bit complicated. Um, but basically, you know, this equation, it's a differential equation, okay? And so you can uh, uh, solve uh, this equation. Uh, and so you can do that with, a, with an integrating factor of e to the minus tau, uh, and you end up with uh, a kind of formal solution of the radio transfer equation that looks like this. So now we're looking at the intensity as a function of optical depth through the medium. Um, this term on the left is the sort of constant of integration, if you like. It's the whatever uh, intensity of the radiation was when it went in to the to the medium uh, on the far side. Okay, and this is what's happening uh, through the medium as we integrate from uh, our side down through the medium to some whatever optical depth we're we're going through, and because we're starting with an optical depth zero on the near side and integrating in through the medium up to some optical depth, we need this dummy variable here. Okay. And so again, you keep seeing this uh, e to the minus tau factor here. Uh, we'll perhaps come back to that in a little moment. Okay, so that's the former solution. So again, I'm not gonna dwell on this one. You know, If you were doing a, a full solution of a radio transfer problem, then you, you need to solve this equation. Um, but let's look at some uh, special cases just to make things a bit easier. So let's assume that we're in a kind of a, a uniform medium, if you like, um, where the source function is constant all the way along the, the line of sight, all the way through the medium. That would normally mean that, you know, the temperature and the density are exactly the same, so that you had a uniform medium. And then let's also assume that this incident radiation term is, is zero. So that basically, you know, there's, there's no source of radiation coming in from the, from the back. So in that case, you end up with a, a simpler version uh, of the, what the equation looks like. So that the intensity of radiation that we see will be uh, the source function times one times e to the minus tau. Uh, which this is the total optical depth uh, through the medium. Okay, so the emission is really, in a sense, taken care of with the source function. So that's um, you know j nu over kappa nu, and then the optical depth of the medium is taken care of with this one to the e to the minus tau factor. And of course, at every single frequency, the optical depth is different, and so you you know you can see that the spectrum would change as a function of frequency here. 
Okay, so we'll come back to that one uh, in a bit. So just to, um, for those of you, I'm not suggesting everyone does this if, if, if sort of maths and physics is not your thing, you can sit this one out. Um, but in the break here, you might want to take five or 10 minutes just to uh, think about uh, a special case of the radiative transfer equation when you've only got absorption processes present, i.e. there is no emission uh, coming. So obviously that's an ideal situation. Um, doesn't normally happen, um, but just it's quite instructive to, uh, to look at that. So if we go back to the uh, radiative transfer equation, it would mean that the source function was zero because there was the emissivity would be zero. And so you only have this much more simple uh, equation in this case. So those of you who like to solve simple differential equations, um, just have a go at, uh, at solving that one. And we'll come back after the break and see what we get. 